Thanks for being here. Let's begin. Without uh, the need to adjust or change our breath, let's simply engage listening, exploring, feeling uh, our breath in and through our, our instrument, this body instrument. So if you tend toward mm, just ordinary breathing or a soft meditation-like breath or an ujjaya breath, they're all fine. But we'll begin to listen to our breath, feel our breath. And some things to notice as you gently send the tailbone downward. Do you feel your breath expressing in the low back? Can you feel your breath in the <coughs> sides of your body? Is there more breath prominence in the left side or right side? Is there ease of breath in some places or resistance? So a little bit of a hypothesis on my part, so subject to revision. As part of the wonderful, cool, developmental piece of this kind of listening and exploration, I believe seems to help set the stage for insight. So I just want to put that out there as a practice element today. How do we prepare our environment for insight? Those instances, those moments of realization where without a doubt something is, this feels real, this feels good, this is true. How do we prepare our body for insight? How do we prepare our environment for insight? So each and every breath can help us set the stage. Each and every breath can be a reminder for moving from ordinary habitual, um, vigilant sensing to deeper, non-ordinary realization. Okay. So if we could push a button, I'm sure we would, but in lieu of having this magic button to press, give me an insight, how do we prepare our cellular environment, our neurological environment for these aha, these eurekas to occur? So let's use some breath work, classic way to engage 
right? This listening, this deeper non-ordinary state, okay? First, kapalabhati. This will occur in two parts. First part, kapalabhati, short, sharp exhalations. And we'll only be working 30 or 40 pumps. So when you're ready, let's begin. And after those 30 or 40 pumps, we'll take a 10 count inhalation. We'll hold for 10 counts, approximately 10, before exhaling 10. We'll do that tw uh, twice more for a total of three. Inhaling 10, holding 10, exhaling 10. Feel for softening around the brain and the eyes and the hands, softening the abdomen and the core. Part of this slowing down that we do with the various rhythms of our being is to help us catch some insight, to help us see more clearly. Or to perhaps notice what we might otherwise just skip right over. We'll do that whole two-part series again. 30, 40 pumps, Kapalabhati, plus three rounds, 10, 10, 10. 10 in, 10 hold, 10 out. And if that's clear to you, let's begin. If you need me to say it again, just show me some visual um, noise. <laughs>
let's set up for a seated spinal twist with our left foot atop our right thigh. As an aside, if I'm doing breath work that has a counting element to it, a metric, very often I won't even introduce the word three or five or ten, the number, the image, the, s the internal sound. I won't bring any numerical imagery or linguistics into my breath, but I'll use each one of my digits checking in and relaxing every single digit, and that becomes the metric. So it turns out in like a 10, 10, 10, I've gone through both hands and relaxed every single digit three times. And then I don't have to be swayed into the linguistics or the numerical component of counting. It's just a different embodied way of using metric. So I've got my left over my right. We'll be twisting to our left. And when you exhale, the left hand can reach for the foot or you can post the hand on the ground. Mm -hmm. Very good. I'll opt to have my right hand grab left knee. Inhaling, slightly unwind. Straighten the right leg. So this leaves us in either half lotus still, or you can move this left leg to the ground. It really is up to your knees. Okay. I'm going to grab my strap, looping it around my left knee. Let me turn. Right hand reaches behind back and grab either your shin or the strap around your shin. Inhale, reach with the left arm, lift up. Breathing into those upper back bones. Exhale, fold forward. Chest leads, shoulders melt away from the neck. The neck can soften. Explore feeling the breath in the back and the sides of your ribs. Feel the left side, the right side. Right. If our aim had very little to do with the depth of stretch and had more to do with how do I engage this leg, this arm, this breath, this position, that I may happen into an insight. Does that change how we're in the pose? If I'm working this pose with the, the mindset of 
how can insight come through at this moment? What might I alter? What might I lessen? What might I relax? What might I deepen? Let's release. Inhale, use the hands, walk your way up. And carefully unwind, we'll switch the cross of our legs. We'll have our right over our left. This can be half lotus or cross-legged. Seated spinal twist. Moving on exhale, we'll turn to our right. Insight can come through at any moment, and it can. <laughs> How do I increase my odds? You know, it's kind of that, that golfer's anecdote, I wish I could remember the professional golfer hitting, hitting holes in one, right? Journalist asks, how are you hitting another hole in one? And he goes, luck. Like, but you hit buckets and buckets of balls every day. It's like, well, more practice, more luck. So we can set the stage for luck, <laughs> for insight, for natural uh, occurrences. Now inhaling, let's unwind somewhat. We're straightening the left leg, the bottom leg. And now the left hand reaches behind back and grabs either shin or the strap that's around your shin. Okay, like so. And inhaling, I'm reaching up with the right arm, exhaling, fold forward. Softening through that neck, feet active. And when we release, use hands, inhale, press, walk your trunk back up. Carefully unwind legs. And let's lie on back as we prepare for elbow to knee. Something I appreciate a lot especially after like, closing up my knee joint really snugly in those, those lotuses, those half lotus, is to now use the, the elbow to knee to fully extend the knee. So already my knee is going through a full, really quite a full range of, of motion. Let's do that. With our feet off the ground, inhale. We'll float the head and the shoulders off, off the ground. 
I'm feeling that breath in the low back. And we have a really light touch on the uh, abdomen breath, right? And curl tailbone, exhale, reach out through the left leg. Now start to bring on that contraction. So that contraction is fuller and fuller, engaging those quadriceps more, more, and more. Pull low belly down. Inhale, we'll bend that left knee. And curl tailbone, exhale, straightening the right leg. And just using those quadriceps, those thigh muscles, and start to straighten the knee, engaging the contraction, straightening more, adding a little more contraction, turning on a few more muscle fibers, pull low belly down. Inhale, bend right knee. I'll talk through one more, the curl tailbone. And then exhaling, reach out through the left leg. As I'm engaging the quadriceps, straightening the knee, getting a little more contraction, spread the foot bones, pull low belly down. Inhale, bend left knee. And that breath spread into the low back, curl tailbone, exhale, right leg extends, straightening by way of contraction, so I'm engaging more muscle fibers, engaging, spreading the foot bones, engaging those leg muscles, pull low belly down. All right, let's do three more on each side, and let's do those at our own pace. So let's continue. I'm doing this without any jerky or sudden movements in the abdomen. I'm not bracing suddenly. It's just breath and that intra-abdominal pressure and that taffy-like pulling the belly down. There's no sudden, like, belly bump kind of bracing effect. Everything's very, very smooth, liquidic. It's my observation that occasionally a handful of us, as we're doing these kinds of abdominal, these pressurized, we're creating these pressurized moments in our, in our, our torso, it's almost like pumping the gas, pumping the brake. It can have a really, like a sudden pump-like effect. And I'm suggesting we can do these with a very liquidic mind. We can enter into the abdomen, feeling the abdomen adjust structure and move and pull and empty without any suddenness. I would recommend trying this style of motion on, especially if you have some, some gut irritation, some digestive um, irritation. We can do just one more while we're lying, and that's frog lifting through. So, we can keep the feet off the ground, separate the legs apart. Now 
Now, right here at the onset, I can feel a little abdomen pressure moving my low back to the ground. And if I maintain that, no sudden or jarring pumping the back toward the ground is necessary. I'm just going to maintain that. So here we go, inhaling into the low back as we raise the head up just a smidge. And exhaling, kind of draws the pubic bone toward the sternum, reaching out to the thigh bones, feet active, pull low belly down. Now my back is still on the ground, so I just inhale into the low back. I'm relaxing only as much as necessary. So I don't have to pump my back to the ground or brace it uh, quickly. Exhale, I'll reach through the thighs, pressing out through the heel bones, pull low belly down. Let's do the last four on our own, please. When you are ready to exit, set your head down, use hands. Just kind of pick the legs together and set them down. Lying spinal twist. Straighten the right leg along the ground. Hug the left leg close to your torso. Turn onto your right side. Prop may be placed under that left knee. Now you have a choice with this left arm. You can reach overhead, or you can reach behind you or to your left. And the important thing is once you select your arm position, how do I breathe that I may bring about, I might have an insight? So in this way, our body is not just the object of our attention, it's the arena, it's the very context. And we'll move to the other side, so first to the back. Adjust legs, straighten left, bend right. Turn onto left side. 
select right arm position. Up into the right corner or directly to the right. How do we breathe as if a connection is about to form in our, in our cellular matrix? vehicle of this consciousness. How do we awaken the, the chest and the breast and the heart and the lungs? How do we breathe in ways where that might just spark or set off a profound realization? We're not trying to trick ourselves into getting something. There, this is a practice more in setting the stage how would I breathe? How would I attend if something quite miraculous and connection making was about to occur? Let's turn back to our backs and we'll move onto elbows and knees for dolphin. So turn to a side. And we'll move there with relaxed neck. And I've been moving the spine around on the ground. I find it really important to use the hands and to let the, the spine and the neck and the head move up rather smoothly. Some of us get really sensitive to those pressure changes in the spinal cord and the brain. So just the pace of getting up, we may have to adapt. All right, dolphin. Elbows under shoulders, knees under hips. Inhale into back of heart. Exhaling, toes curl under. And neck is relaxed as we press the knees off the ground. be raising one leg at a time. I'm going to begin with my left foot toes anchoring down the right heel cord. Now when I anchor that right heel cord, push with those arms, lift through the shoulders, inhaling smoothly raise that left foot off the heel, sending it back. feel for lifting or rather moving that left leg away from the bottom of brain. Learn if that left leg reach can lighten the brain. <laughs> and you may have to relax some of those neck muscles in there to appreciate that, um, that foot to brain connection. All right, we'll switch sides. So let's place the left foot down. Right foot toes wrap around the left heel cord. Now as that heel sinks down a little bit, push with the forearms, get lighter through the shoulders. Permit the head and the neck to simply hang. 
and inhaling smoothly raise right foot from the heel exhaling reach right leg away from your brain so it's feeling that foot head connection that foot neck connection the leg doesn't have to go higher i'm just reaching it further away from my brain Breathing into the sides, the sides of those ribs. All right. And let's exit, inhaling the right foot down. All right, gently set knees down. Now, when we stand, we'll be setting up for flank stretch. So I take a wide stance. The outer edges of my feet may run parallel, which can feel like slightly interned feet. Fold centrally. Left hand reach for right ankle. I still hang as centrally as I can. Neck relaxed. Feet active. And breathing into this left side rib cage. Breathing as if anything might be revealed at any moment. And this isn't a, a practice of, you know, being precious necessarily, but it's being able to cultivate a, a, a particular way of attending. That's at once exquisitely delicate relaxed of agenda and deeply listening what would that be like to breathe in a way where there's no agenda for my ribs or my hamstrings or my hip or my brain yeah and when we release the hands Right hand grab left ankle. walk the hands centrally turn now right foot to the right we're setting up a warrior two stance with our hands on the ground so my right foot turns to the right and I'm turning my left foot inwardly go right hand on right thigh I'll keep left hand on ground Head to ankle prep. Now, part of this prep is just feeling for a quality of softness at the level of pelvic floor and hip socket. So let's begin our breath there. And again, with a, a kind of a wonderment, like an insight could come through as I'm sensing pelvis, sacrum, genitals, and back, 
how would I promote that with the quality of my breath, the quality of my attention? Soften through the neck and the jaw, especially when we're engaging with the hip. And then release that hand from thigh, inhaling. Let's walk the hands toward the right foot. Exhaling, step the right foot back into downward dog. Wrap the shoulders. I feel those upper arm bones rotating in their sockets as you bend the elbows. All right, head to ankle prep. Inhale, step your left foot forward. I'm going right hand on the ground, and the left hand is on my left thigh. Adding this pressure, feeling tiny little sensational shifts in the body. And especially for those of us who have been doing these moves a lot, for a lot of years, a lot of repetitions, it can be extraordinarily freeing to have no agenda with these moves to not need them to repair something, to not need this particular pose to unhook or unkink some, some issue going on in the hip or the leg or the back. It's really freeing to arrive in the body, to be able to live there for a moment, and simply wonder what may come through this, this exquisite organism that I'm caring for. What may come through as I have my hand on my thigh and I'm breathing deeply? What might just come through? When we release, we'll inhale, walk the hands toward the left foot. Now this time, when we exhale, step the left foot back into plank, and let's lower all the way down to the ground. Okay. Very simple move, a wave dancer move, meaning as I inhale into the abdomen, I'm going to elevate the chest just using my back muscles, and as we exhale, we descend the chest moves back toward the ground. We'll do it a few more times. That's really it. The hands need not work. Inhale is the gentle uplift. And I am keeping my legs active, so the feet might lift a little bit or they might not. Exhaling is the descent. Let's do two more. I'm pairing the breath with the ascent and descent. Inhale is the ascent. Exhaling, the muscles relax, and I'm feeling them relax. I'm feeling the layered, gradual softening. Last one. And once you've lowered, inhale the hands under the chest. Exhale, press back, downward dog. Let's step the feet forward as we descend into malasana, or really just sitting really low, squat-like. 
And it's here that we're testing and finding out, will I need a strap for my arms as we move into a, uh, some interlock stuff? Will I need something under my heels so I don't feel so tippy? Okay, so get those into play. A little elevation under the heels just helps me sink down and remain on my feet. Okay. And I'm starting with just the right hand. The right arm reaches through the, between the legs, wraps around the right shin, and here the right hand can grab the thigh. Left hand goes behind back, or I can link the hands. Okay. Yep, I'll say it again. Yep, exactly. The right arm has wrapped around the right shin. Okay. So it was softened through the neck. Now, if you want more challenge, you can bring your feet more closely together. What I also recommend as a, to challenge your exploration is can you breathe under the right shoulder blade? Can you breathe into the back of the right lung? Can you feel your breath on the right side of your spine? And when we release the hands, we switch sides. I'm going to change my angle just so you can see a different angle. So now we're doing the left side, my left hand. I reach it forward, and I wrap this left arm around the front of left shin. I'm literally encircling my, my shin. Now here I can grab onto my thigh, pass the right hand behind back, or you can latch onto fingertips. Relax through the neck a little bit and breathing into the upper back. When we release and unwind, help yourself to a rest moment because I want to show you one of the two ways we can go from here. There's only one more pose before Shavasana. And we're working either windblown cypress or we're working bridge on the wall. In each of these, we're accessing the upper back it's kind of a, a deep fold for just the upper back. Let me describe both of them and some of the props you'll need. Windblown cypress is a variation on shoulder stand. What I need is extra... Okay, a little extra padding to the left and the right because my elbow is going to kickstand to the right or to the left. Let me show you at this angle first. And then I can talk us in and I want to, you know, help us enter safely. So starting from the way we might enter shoulder stand, one is feet up, pelvis up. My hands support my pelvis. 
Now, this might be all that you can or want to do. It really depends on the upper back and the back of the neck. If I feel particularly stiff around the base of the neck, I might only go here and just camp out and breathe into upper back. Let me continue with windblown cypress. Okay. I'm going to shift my pelvis. I'm going to separate my legs. So I'm reaching my left leg, in this instance, away from my left shoulder blade. So I get a really interesting form of flank stretch or side bend in this windblown cypress. So if you're familiar with that and you want to start getting into it, it comes from the, the, the shoulder stand move. Your other option contains a lot more support. I'd get my butt next to the wall and I would bridge up. The nice thing is I have 100% support. So if something starts to feel a little fussy or something starts to get really interesting in my upper back, I can pause. There's no wavering. I can get really steady here. Now, there are a few other options. So if one of those does not work for you, just let me know right now, and I'll describe uh, some folds we can do with the wall. Or, okay. All right, I will talk through windblown cypress. You don't have to follow my words, but I just want to talk through it again if you need that assist. Yeah. So first, I come into shoulder stand. I lift the feet up, I lift the butt up, and hands support near the low back and the sacrum. Two, if I'm wanting to move into that windblown cypress, I must swivel my pelvis. So if I were starting, I would move my right elbow to the right, and I would swivel to put my sacrum on my right palm. Okay. You might want to hold that. That little swivel puts an interesting little twist through the uh, rib area and the waist. And I might hug my right thigh close to my chest and reach the left foot away from the left shoulder blade. I wanted to go further still, I'd very carefully reach my left arm overhead and grab my right foot. Now admittedly, it's nice when there's a wall nearby and you can get very steady. I'm going to return to center to talk through the other side. So pelvis central. And this time, I'm going to turn my left elbow, move it to the left. Swivel the pelvis, place sacrum on palm. Reach the right leg away from the right shoulder blade. Right hand placed overhead can reach for left foot.
return centrally, and we'll roll from that shoulder stand, spine down to ground. And we're ready for Shavasana. And how might I rest as if some insight might reveal itself through my person? When you're ready, let's bend knees and turn to a side and press to seated. Namaste.